This box contains a lot of valves, which I've pulled from guitar amplifiers over the years. Thermionic valves, or vacuum tubes, are consumable amplifying elements. They will eventually wear out with use and need replaced if you want your amplifier to continue functioning. Despite there being many valves in this box, and despite all of them coming from amplifiers which were experiencing some symptoms of valve failure, I know that most of these are probably perfectly fine. It's only a small number that have genuinely failed. You see, power valves typically come in pairs because most amplifiers are designed to operate in a class AB push-pull arrangement, where each valve amplifies only one hemicycle of the waveform. By distributing the amplification work between the two valves, we can achieve greater efficiency and power output. Some amps will double up and have four valves, two for each hemicycle, to push the power output further. But if only one of these valves starts to fail, that's enough to throw out the performance of the entire amplifier, with the user likely to experience sudden volume drops, unusual performance, and other sound-related abnormalities. The problem is, there's usually no way to tell just by looking at the valve which ones are good and which are faulty. Common practice is to replace the entire quad or pair, but that could mean replacing several perfectly good, well-balanced valves. To determine the electric condition of the valve, we'd need some sort of fancy testing equipment. There exists very sophisticated and very expensive valve test equipment that can give accurate data on voltages and currents of all the electric elements of the valve, and operating such equipment requires a level of knowledge and education that the average guitarist or hi-fi enthusiast simply doesn't possess. What we need is an easy-to-use, all-in-one device where we can press a button, let the test run, and then be presented with a simple indication of if our valves are still good or if they have failed and should be replaced. That's what the valve tester Mark II from Orange is going to allow me to do. This is a device that I've been waiting on Orange finalizing for the last three years at least. This is a significant upgrade on version one. It has a compact and robust steel enclosure, making it incredibly portable for traveling techs who need to diagnose problems on the road. Orange have upgraded to Belton valve bases, which are the best in the business. Because if you're going to be taking valves in and out of these hundreds of times, you don't want the bases getting loose. These are what the amp techs at Orange have recommended after years of testing valves. This will test a large number of the most popular audio valve types, including EL34, 6L6, KT88, EL84s, and all of your ECC or 12A designated preamp valves. And with the use of expansion modules, this will test certain direct heated hi-fi valves like the 300B and rectifier valves. Now, because there is a large difference between the performance and pinouts of power valves and preamp valves, and there's obviously significant difference in their roles and signal amplification, this valve tester's microprocessor will internally manage voltages and run over 20 tests relevant to the type of valve under examination, outputting either a final grading of condition and gain performance, or issuing a fault code to let you know why a particular valve has failed its test. The Mark II also expands on what is being tested, with it being able to identify thermal runaway, enhanced grid leakage detection, and the ability to perform microphony tests on preamp valves all being new to this unit. Armed with a valve tester and the booklet that instructs me on how to operate it, I'm going to test every single valve, make a note of its condition, and if any of them fail, I'll be able to use the fault logs to determine the cause. Orange really are catering to the typical guitarist's cranial capabilities in making this device super simple to operate. All we need to do is insert a valve into the correct base, cycle through the lights until we find the type of valve we want to test, press OK, sit back and watch the lights flash for a couple of minutes, and then receive our diagnosis. When a valve passes the tests, the valve tester displays a numeric value relating to its gain characteristics. This is important to make note of because it allows us to match valves together into pairs of similar performance. As I mentioned before, power valves typically come in pairs in order to accomplish push-pull amplification, where each valve is responsible for amplifying one half of the waveform. The ideal case is, of course, that both valves have similar gain performance, so that we amplify both halves of the waveform by the same amount. 
If we were to match two valves with very different gain levels, we'd run the risk of our signal being distorted in ways we don't intend, and it can be taxing on the amplifier as each valve may be drawing different amounts of current. I tested two pairs of EL34s of different brands and different internal construction. The first pair tested out to have a gain rating of 5, while the other pair tested as 11s. The valve tester is spitting out this number as a reference to help match valves of similar performance. It's based on several tested parameters and can be hand wave simplified to the bigger the number, the more gain the valve has. With such a gulf in their gain characteristics, it simply wouldn't make much sense to match one of the Harmas with one of these JJs. These ECC83 preamp valves contain two triode valve sections inside one glass tube, which means that when we test these, we get two numbers displayed. Some of these 83s I tested were so well matched that only one single light illuminated, meaning that both triode sections had the same gain performance, while others had considerable difference between the two sections. Knowing which ECC83s have the identical performance and which don't can inform you of where those valves would be best suited in the signal chain. Amps typically have multiple preamp valves and they're not all performing the same task. Take these 3PM branded ECC83s. Let's assume these are being inserted into a hypothetical amplifier which has one tube for the clean channel gain stage, one for the distortion channel gain stage, and one for the phase splitter. Of the three results I obtained, it would make most sense to put the most balanced 83 into the phase splitter, which obeys the same rules as the power valves in that you ideally want both halves to be amplifying by the same amount for the best performance and to minimise any unwanted distortion of the signal. Then I'd want the lower gain of the remaining two for the clean channel and the higher gain of the two for the distortion channel. It's not that the amplifier wouldn't work if we placed these in a different arrangement, but it makes sense to optimise the performance if we have that data available to us. Valves that are worn out are signalled by a yellow light. This quad of 6L6s were removed from my Bugera 333 a very long time ago, after one of them flagged up on the amplifier's built-in valve monitoring system. Three of these valves tested out as good as expected, and the fourth returned as worn, with a gain rating lower than the rest. The lower gain performance could well be a result of the valve wearing out and not performing as it once did. Any valves that return worn on the tester should be replaced before they fail completely and cause damage to the amp. So what happens if a valve fails its test? This EL84 hit the fail state and flagged error code 5. Checking against the fault log for a pentode valve, we can see that this fault relates to the screen grid current exceeding its maximum value. This is caused by the internal electrodes leaking current or in the extreme creating a short circuit inside the valve. As a result, the valve will pull more current than it's supposed to. This kind of failure is extremely dangerous for the amplifier as any of the valve's internals shorting out and drawing too much current is very likely to pull high current through surrounding components, burning them out. That's exactly what happened to the amplifier these valves were originally in. One of my friends started to notice the volume of his amp dropping, but instead of recognising that as a sign of his valves wearing out, he just turned up the volume and kept playing. The amp would drop its volume and distortion levels several times and he'd just keep cranking it louder until eventually the whole amp stopped working. Not only had he completely cooked the valves, but he'd burned out some components on the circuit board in the process, making the repair more difficult and more costly than it needed to be. It was my dad who took a swing at repairing that amp, by the way. He's built a fair few valve amps in his time, and I was the one who ordered the new valves once it was fixed. Hence why I've got the dead ones still in my possession. I've been holding on to these for years in case I ever got the chance to put them on a valve tester and discover exactly the fault that had bricked the amplifier. I was also dismayed to discover that one of my old Mullard ECC83s failed due to going into thermal runaway a positive feedback loop where the valve is constantly biasing itself hotter and drawing more current until it overheats, and perhaps even ionising material inside the vacuum, increasing the conductivity within the tube and reinforcing that heating effect. 
Thermal runaway, as much as I understand it, is usually more a concern for fixed bias power valves. It's often stated that preamp valves, like these, since they are cathode biased, which affords them permanent negative feedback, can't go into thermal runaway during normal operation. So maybe this failure won't show itself in use? I could maybe throw this into a sacrificial device and see how it performs. Or maybe this old valve is indeed faulty and I need to accept it and let it go. Its counterpart, however, passed the tests without issue, both triode sections having balanced gain ratings. While we're testing the preamp valves, let's check to see if they exhibit any microphonic behaviour. With the valve socketed and heated up, I can give it a gentle tap with the back end of a brand appropriate pencil. If the valve is behaving as it should, nothing should light up. However, if there are any loose elements inside the valve that will erroneously convert physical vibrations of the glass into electric signal, then we'll get a strong visual indication of this with all the orange lights illuminating. This is far from a rigorous scientific deduction of a valve's microphonic behaviour, but it is plenty to give an amp tech a solid indication of which valve is causing the problem. Now, as I said at the start, there are much more sophisticated valve testers out there than this orange valve tester. And I'll no doubt see a few people who are smart enough to read the graphs and calculate the grid currents from those devices in the comments talking about how this just isn't sufficient to give you real useful data. However, I would argue that what Orange have done here is streamlined the valve testing process down to its essentials. This provides a quick way to test valves in a compact footprint which doesn't require any specialist knowledge to operate and ultimately provides us with as much information as most amp techs would need to know. Is the valve good? And if so, rate its performance so I can match it to a similar valve. Now I don't think this is the kind of device that any regular guitarist should be looking to buy. Its price would put you all off for a start, but for anyone who is regularly servicing or repairing valve amplifiers, be that guitar amps or hi-fi amps, then this is a solid investment that will allow you to quickly get an idea of the condition of the valves in the devices you are working on. I'll certainly be making plenty of use of this going forward and perhaps even pulling the valves out of my amps and making sure they are all optimally placed, because I'm sat in pedantic like that. Having said that, I suppose the other demographic for this is the golden ear audiophile hi-fi guys. The ones who have spent thousands on their sound system and will be very concerned about making sure their valves are optimally matched. Having one of these by your side will ensure that you can pull the valves from your amp every week and test to make sure they are still matching up. If you are unsure if you fall into that demographic or not, just ask yourself the following. Do you use your sound system to listen to music? Or do you use music to listen to your sound system? If it's the latter, you'll absolutely want one of these. Naturally, you'll find purchasing links for this valve tester in the description of this video. And if you'd like to see more content about valves in the future, then leave me a comment with something you'd like to know about these hot glass bulbs. That's all for now. Keep it loud and stay safe. <laughs>